So this is Shannon from Steve Sewenvac in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania for another video on V8 software. In today's class, we're going to be talking about creating cut work for applique shapes. And this is used in um, lieu of having DesignWorks software, which was our first software that enabled us to use the cut work tool. The Bernina cut work tool, as many of you know, has four positions and it is a blade apparatus that goes into the embroidery machine and the software knows when to turn the blade to whatever angle it needs to cut the selected shape and so with v8 software we do have a modified cut work ability um, to use with our cut work tool one of the things that's also different about the software is no longer do we have the three palettes uh, located up here. Uh, we used to have the, uh, we still have of course the Corel Draw, otherwise known as Artwork Canvas, the Embroidery Canvas, which I am in currently, and I can tell because there's a yellow background behind that. And what used to be here was the Multi-Hoop Canvas. That's actually located in its own toolbox down here. And there's a lot of cool features with that that I can't wait to show you in a future video. What's taken its place now is the uh, embroidery location uh, file. And so this is our embroidery library. And this is now a new way of looking for designs in V8. And I can choose any location that I want to add to this browser. And once that has been chosen, it's there for future reference for additional uh, uses of the software. So if there are specific places that you save your designs you can add to the browser on this side and they are readily available and as you can see it's nice that we have a pictorial representation of the design and if we hover over the design it will give us the date it was created the height in um, metric if it's selected or inches if that is selected the number of stitches the number of color changes uh, in addition to um, the other thing that i will um, show you is this is now we're dealing with what's called a .emb file and it's an all-inclusive or all-in-one design file format. JAN is what our Janome friends uh, know and love as their format type which we can read in this software and um, art of course being the uh, traditional art format that we've known in prior versions. So let's go ahead and get started. And for this exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to uh, our public embroidery file. And in a public embroidery, we're going to find Bernina 8 Embroidery. And when I click on that, I come down to where it says Arts and Crafts. And that's how I found this dialog or this selection of designs. You know, speaking about location of things, um, Depending if you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8 and 10, the location of these files are in different places on the computer. So what I did is I created a, a little Word document that hopefully might help. And you might want to pause the video to write this down. But uh, there are two main file types that we work with when we're dealing with the uh, version or the V8 software of Bernina. One, of course, being embroidery designs and the second being artwork files. And so when we're dealing with our embroidery designs, if you're under Windows 7, it's found in the Libraries tab, Embroidery, Public Embroidery, Bernina 8 Embroidery. If you're a Windows 8 or 10 user, you would be under your hard drive, generally C drive, Users, Public, Public Embroidery, Bernina 8 Embroidery. For the artwork files, and they could be your JPEGs or your bitmaps or your vector files. Under Windows 7, it would be under Libraries, Pictures, Bernina 8 Pictures, and in here you'll have subcategories of Articles, Artwork, Fabric, and Graphic Markers. In Windows 8 and 10, you would be under your C Drive, Users, Public, Public Pictures, Bernina 8 Pictures. I hope that might be of some help. Back to the software. If we, uh, we're going to work with a teapot today, and if I double click on the teapot, that will bring it into our 
embroidery screen. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually look at the uh, color film. And currently I have it selected to look at just the different colors that are in the design. So each color represents an object. But you can also up here click on show objects and sometimes you'll have more than one object in the same color and this is how you can differentiate between a specific object that may have the same color as another object. For right now we'll just go back to the color view and if you notice this object has come in group and I can tell that it's grouped because if I select it everything in the color film turns blue and I can also see in the upper left hand corner of each of the color chips there is the group icon. So in version 7 as well as with version 8 v8 software what you can do is you can hold down the alt key and even though this object or the design is grouped I can actually come in here and select an individual object and I'm going to select this outline satin stitch. Once this is selected I'm going to go into the cut work tab and in the cut work tab, I'm going to click on add cut work border. This dialog comes up and there are two choices. One, we could make this into stump work pieces and we have that in V7 software as well as V8. Perhaps we'll do a video on that in the not too distant future. But what I'm after is actually the, the cut work option. And I have an offset set at minus one point five millimeters and the reason for that is that should take the cut file to about the middle of the satin column that we have here. If I had a zero offset the fabric would be cut more to the outer perimeter of the satin stitch but for our applique purposes we want the fabric cut so that that satin stitch when it does stitch out will pretty much straddle the cut edge of the fabric. I also want to make sure I uncheck include holes because I don't want a hole where that handle uh, was. And once I click OK, magically that has been created. Now, you might not see the cut line because currently I am in uh, TrueView. If I touch T on the keyboard, however, it takes me into the editing view and you can see this outline here is indeed my cut work line. So what I'll do next is I'm going to go back to my color film and I'm going to go ahead and look at this design based on the objects and not on the colors. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, because remember whenever we make something in software, it is always added to the end of the conga line. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and select on this very last object. I'm going to come up here to where I have my cut tool and I'll go ahead and click cut. I come over now to my new tab and then I will select paste and here is my pasted in cut line. This will be my uh, cut line for the Bernina um, cut tool. I'm going to actually put this in a medium size hoop so I will go ahead and left click and I believe I had already selected the medium size hoop but just to review if I right click on that icon I will get the dialog box where I can choose my machine and I can choose my hoop and in this case we're going to go ahead and choose the medium size hoop and we're going to use foot 44C which of course is the foot that we would use for the cut work tool. I will go ahead and click OK and as we can see this object is not quite within the parameter of the um, legal zone for uh, doing things and so what I'm going to do is come up to the rotation tool and I'm going to click it twice that brings the design into the hoop and again just um, for point of reiteration we do want to make sure we choose the hoop that will most closely fit the design and in particular with cut work we want to make sure that that's held under a good um, good uh, support and so at this point I can come up to where I have my um, um, file and I can go ahead and save as and I can save this as um, my art file uh, for future references but if I do want to actually stitch this out I would come under file and I would go under to the um, uh, export to machine file and here I have the ability to save it as a exp um, USB stick or 
for some of the other brands of machines that you might own and I would click save and send it over to my machine, machine that way. Hope that's been of some help. I look forward to joining you on the next video.